Yes, ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is the Ruger 1022, modified with the Tapco composite stock with an extendable rear stock section. It actually locks in about four different positions. What we got here is a rifle that is simplicity itself. Simple bolt charging, you insert a loaded magazine. Once you have the magazine inserted, you simply pull back the charging handle, let it go forward. The round is loaded. You can then place the weapon on safe. Um, the controls are pretty simple. Here's your, uh, this is your bolt locking lever here. You pull the bolt to the rear, engage the lever, and the bolt stays locked to the rear. I was going to just do a quick barrel cleaning if you don't want to break down the whole weapon to, uh, to clean it. Um, the composite has a very good feel to it. I put the same type of stock on my Mini 14. And like the Mini 14 version, you can open up the bottom section. There's a compartment in here for storing spare batteries for whatever device or flashlight you get to mount on there. If you use the gun for recreational purposes, which is a perfect reason to purchase a 1022 and the fact that they're just downright inexpensive for less than two hundred dollars for about a hundred and some change you can pick up this weapon now of course the tapco stock is running anywhere from sixty to seventy dollars depending on where you get it but if you don't want to go to the extent of having a pistol grip which i like a pistol grip i can control the trigger better i feel i can hold the weapon better especially with a mini 14 it really helps to have that pistol grip. Uh, the front stock allows you to remove this cover to reveal a rail, which allows you to mount either a flashlight. If you're varmint hunting, it's a good place to do it, so it's not in the way of your sights. Locks back in place. And of course, you can use a front rail, which has the option of standard weaver. And of course, You have two rail sides in the very middle. You can mount the actual correction. Let me say that. You can mount the weaver rail in the center, and the width in front and back is standard uh, Picatinny rail size. But the 1022 also comes with an excellent top mount um, bracket you can put on there. It's just held on by four four flathead screws. Make sure when you put it on, you snug it up real good. And it also gives you the option, because as you can see, I don't know if I can get in here and see it, there's two sizes on the rail. There's the larger, as you can see. You have the larger rail size on the outside, and on the inner part of the rail is the smaller, narrower rail size for the uh, Weaver devices, which you might want to mount on. This actual copy of the... Uh, Aim point comp scope actually has a weaver mount uh, base, so I had no problem putting that on there. A little bit about ammunition. Well, what can I say? 22 long life. 40 grains of pure fun. Uh, the ammo's cheap. You can pick it up uh, at just about any local Walmart in your 500 round box for probably less than 15 bucks. If you go online, you may be able to find it for sale and you know cheaper rates even than that and different quantities magazines as you can see this is the eagle which i think is a pretty good downright pretty good brand just because it looks plastic and flimsy trust me it's not i pick this up slam it on the ground rounds won't come out won't come out of it and it stays pretty steady and the device is is a rotating spring device because if you look you can't see any hard or any long spring in there. There's a spring inside the base here that simply winds up the more rounds you put in. And as you can see, I kind of have a variety of them in there. I have some Remingtons and some Winchesters and got all these buckets of bullets. I just start loading them up. Once you start shooting this thing, you'll see the advantage of having a 20 to 30 round magazine. Um, myself personally, I either recommend you get the Eagles or the Butler Creeks. Don't get any other brands. I haven't tried them. Those two I've been successful with. Or if you really want, you can just keep the 10 round uh, Ruger mini clip that comes with the 22 and it just fits flush inside the magazine well here. As I said, the controls are very easy to use. Uh, manual buckhorn sights that you can flip up. 
can see right there fairly effective but I prefer a red dot scope because it's just easier to get rounds on your target quicker and if you're varmint hunting like where we live out here where we have this problem with the population of coyotes it's just getting worse and worse and people just hear their chickens are being eaten and if you have cats they're going to be taken out it's just it's getting out of hand since their native habitat all the brush is being cut they're being forced to adapt to move into areas where they can find food and where you got people you have trash and food and they know that anyway back to the point the other reason for the 1022 the most important reason is just good old-fashioned plain fun um, as, a, as you can see this is a stainless variant I like stainless um, it's a little easier to maintain your weapon you just wipe it down just oil the proper areas that the manual tells you which is part of the trigger pack and maybe a few drops inside around the bolt area uh, the weapon is very easy to use uh, one thing I do like the 22 is very similar it's just a little smaller than the actual 5.56 or 223 round one of my questions I have for Ruger is why they would give us such a good heavy barrel on the 1022 and not put one like this on their Mini 14 I don't know I mean uh, I love the Mini 14 I have one also it also has a Tapco stock and I enjoy shooting that one but I've had to purchase an aftermarket kit that bolts to the barrel and bolts in the front to help hold the barrel and stabilize it so it doesn't have barrel what they call barrel lash where it just starts it gets hot after first so many rounds and then it just starts to whip and throw bullets all over the place it actually really drops but with that kit it, it really improved it as you can see though with the 1022 no worries you can fire this barrel up and I've seen people take this 1022 and modified it to full auto where it'll empty out this 25 plus round magazine in just a couple of seconds course the barrel smoking hot after that and this barrel was not intended to throw bullets that rapidly bear that in mind but even being the case I've read a couple of articles where those guys said they haven't had any problems but again if you are going to do that I recommend you get the carbon steel version not the stainless because carbon steel is harder than stainless steel it's just simple fact uh, again for module one I said this is just a brief interview uh, a, a brief preview as you can see uh, the bolt itself is very simple. The weapon strips down very easy. A simple number of screws are removed and you can remove the, the actual receiver section. Take it out. Inspect the trigger pack, everything. The manual is very clear about it. Um, right out of the box, you don't have to add a stock, but I, like I said, I did because I like the look and feel of it. And just mounted some very economic. This copy of the Aimpoint ran me probably about 50 bucks and it has the same adjustments for brightness and it's not bad it's perfect I've had a and it's still the original battery I've gotten I don't know how many hours out of this thing without having to replace the battery uh, and of course the Tapco stock comes with sling sling attachments which really makes it effective for slinging the rifle over your back again quick down and dirty snag these up when you can find them um, I used to see them at Academy all the time along with the Mini 14 and plenty of the AR-15 clones uh, but now it seems they're getting hard to find people are snagging them up whenever they find them because their fear of the current administration and is uh, there's a popular belief going around that they'll, they may try to take people's gun rights away well on that we'll just have to wait and see and keep an eye on your uh, sources of information and use so that you as a citizen can stay informed but as far as for good old-fashioned fun Right here is a great stop, it's very effective. Um, like I said, minimum tr minimal trouble, easy to clean, and unfortunately with rimfire ammunition, it does get a lot of powder back in the, in the bolt area. So er every time you shoot a weapon, you should clean it. That should be standard practice with any, any, any handgun, rifle, or shotgun. And with that, we'll wrap up module number one. On the second module, we'll send some bullets downrange and see how good it is how good this baby can hit the targets. Till then, this is HK, out.